sales and distribution. These are major concerns whereby people are now doing degrees to focus on how to address these problems out of greed. That's how global what we're talking about is today. And hang with me because it will unfold for you more and more as I go down deeper and deeper into this verse. Cybercrime continues to escalate as digital technology transforms and disrupts the business ecosystem. Money laundering continues to destroy value, affecting not only an organization's, organization's reputation, but also its bottom line. More than a third of organizations have experienced economic crime in the past 24 months, as reported by the over 6,000 respondents to PwC's Global Economic Crime Survey in 2016. LifeLock is a successful business because every one of us know how easy it is for someone to steal our identity today because of greed. Senator Rubio used the card of American the greed, also <laughs> called American greed, scams, scoundrels, and suckers. And American greed, scam schemes, and broken dreams is a weekly American true crime television documentary series aired on CNBC all about the greeds of various Americans and what it cost them. In a documentary, and okay. people watch that. People fill themselves with that which is no benefit. Instead of looking at the champions, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, those are the superheroes. Superman and Batman are not superheroes. The, super who, the superheroes of life are Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abu Bakr and Omar radiallahu anhu, Aisha, Fatima. Those are the superheroes. If we would spend our time looking at them instead of what the world tells us are superheroes. Abdul ibn Amr reported the Messenger of Allah delivered a sermon saying, Beware of greed. For it was only greed that destroyed those who came before you. It commanded them to be miserly, and they did so. It commanded them to sever their family ties, and they did so. It commanded them to behave wickedly, and they did so. And this is Sunan Abu Dawood. Abu Huraira reported the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Be aware of injustice, for injustice will be darkness on the day of resurrection. Be aware of obscenity, for Allah does not love obscenity and immorality. Be aware of greed, for it tempted those before you and caused them to make lawful what is unlawful, to shed blood and sever their family ties. Because of greed, they made alcohol legal. Because of greed, they have made prostitution in various states of the United States legal. What Allah made illegal, man, because of greed, is made legal. There are certain politicians that have made their fortune selling army equipment, war equipment. There are politicians that have made their fortunes by creating wars so that they can feed those armies. Yes, we need armies. We need defense. But we don't need to do it out of greed. We need to do it out of protecting civilization. And this is founded. This is sound. Senator Rubio is then, I'm sorry, let's try not to interrupt because of the camera. Oh, so okay. If you have questions, please, if you would, keep them to the end of class. All right. I, I appreciate it, and I'm sorry, but it really does uh, affect the... We also know that family ties are being severed because of greed. I'm never going to speak to my brother or sister again because they got $500 more in the will than I did. And every one of us in this room knows people that this happened to. Well, that's not fair. My sister got this, but I didn't get this. I don't have any sisters or brothers. I'm just being metaphorical here. Umar bin Auf narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, By Allah, I do not fear poverty and starvation overtaking you, but I fear that you will have abundant wealth at your disposal 
as it had been at the disposal of the nations before you. You will then become extremely greedy in accumulating this wealth just as the previous nations had done. This greed will be the cause of your ruin and destruction just as it destroyed the people before you. And this is from Abu, Abu Bakr, sorry, Abu Khari and Muslim. And we know today that the, when a child is born, they are born with $30,000 in debt because people live outside of their means and they use credit cards. So if you take the national debt, the average child comes into the world, you can attribute 30,000. They come into the world in the hole. They come perfect spiritually, but the world puts them in the hole. This dunya, this absolute disillusion, illusion out there, brings people into the world in the hole and trains them that this is the way to live. Just pay the minimum payment and live in hell while you're on earth. Ibn Abbas narrated, I heard the messenger of Allah saying, if a son of Adam had a valley full of gold, he would desire to have two. Nothing can fill his mouth except the dust of his grave. Allah turns and mercy to him who turns to him in repentance. Abu Khari and Muslim. This that we are discussing today, this verse, is so serious. I want you to look at some things that are amazing here. In 2013, the average American family spent $3,000 on entertainment. I ask you, how much money did you spend on Islamic books? How much money did you spend going to Islamic conferences? How much money did you spend to sit at the foot of a scholar? We spend $20 billion on movie tickles, tickets annually. When the Batman movie came out on the eve of Ramadan, people spent money to be distracted by an illusion that brings no long-term benefit. Where is money to see superheroes, so-called. We spend $13 billion on video games annually. We spend $14 billion on concert tickets annually. As a society in 2014, we spent $10 trillion on personal consumption expenditures. That's called tummy tucks, nips, and whatever else you call it. Lifts and drops and flops. <laughs> We spend $12 billion annually on the prestigious beauty industry that tells us that it is for self-fulfillment. Look at the size of the Alta store. May Allah bless them. But look at the size of Alta, a makeup store. And just find out what it costs a square foot to lease that store. And they're selling makeup. And they tell you that you can be cool if you wear that makeup. But you're already cool because Allah made you. You don't need anything on the outside. You need something on the inside. Casinos earn a gross revenue of $125 billion in 2010. According to the National Resources Defense Council, Americans waste 165 billion annually by tossing away unwanted snacks and meals. <laughs> the math works out to approximately $529 per person each year. I hope you're taking this in. More than half the world doesn't have health care and water. This is a travesty, folks. We are spending money on things that are not needs. We need water. We need food. We need to sleep. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu died sleeping on a mat, a straw mat that would make marks on his face. But we have to have a Tempur-Pedic bed. I'm just trying to make it for rizzle for snizzle. There's nothing wrong. May Allah bless you for having your bed. But you know how much of what you're spending is on need and what is on desire. What is to fulfill my own worship and what is it that I need so that I can be a strong soldier for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are doing this expansion of the masjid. It should be peanuts for us to build a $12 million masjid. 
If we can spend this kind of money on movies, but we can't build a mansion without begging and pleading, I hope when the box goes around today, you'll fill it up for the sake of Allah. We're doing dawah. And we have a hard time getting money to do dawah. I feel like I have to beg people for us to take this amazing thing out to the public. Islam. To take peace to people. We have a hard time getting money. We are brainwashed to believe that the way to get ahead is through money. Industrialized societies have higher rates of suicide and depression. They don't call it industrialized slavery for nothing. Companies tell you by contract that you'll work 40 hours, but they want 60 out of you. But they want to pay you for 40. That's stealing. Just like if you work for a company and you contract for 40 hours, but you only work 30, you're stealing 10 from them. And this verse applies to that. If you go to your job and instead of buying your own stapler, you steal it from the company, this verse applies to you. If you take a copy paper from work instead of buying it yourself, this verse appear, applies to you. When the Prophet ﷺ passed away, he owned a mule, a weapon, and a piece of land. And as I said earlier, he slept on a straw mat. He didn't live in a gated community. He didn't live in the most expensive area. Our beloved Prophet lived in abject poverty. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to tie rocks to his stomach to deal with his hunger pains. In this month, sorry, in Ramadan when it arrives on June the 6th, inshallah, we will waste money in the very houses of Allah. How much are we investing annually in our spiritual 401ks? How much are we putting away a month so that we can fulfill the fifth pillar of Islam? All the money we have is entrusted to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our spiritual lives will benefit when we do with it what He wants us to do with it. In Islam, we never exploit for fast money. Let me show you some statistics on lottery tickets. Last year, Americans spent a total of $70.15 billion on lottery tickets, according to the North American Association of State and Provincial Lotteries. How, many, how much money do you think Muslims spent on buying Islamic books? I promise you, it didn't anything like that. That tops the $62.7 billion spent on all those different forms of leisure and entertainment according to most recent sales figures such as sports tickets, books, video games, movie box office and music. $62.7 billion. I only bought one lottery and I have $100. Alhamdulillah. In Surah Isra, Surah 17 and verse 27, Verily, spendthrifts are brothers of the evil ones, and the evil one to his Lord himself ungrateful. So think about that when you go out and you are charging up that credit card and you've got $30,000 in debt, that you are actually the brother of the evil ones. If you love what Allah loves and you hate what Allah hates, you won't do this to yourself. You won't bring this kind of harm to yourself and harm to your family. And then when you die and you don't pay it off, then the rest of the world is paying for how you were living above your means because of the greed in this verse. Surah al araf the heights, verse 31. O children of Adam, Wear your beautiful apparel at every time and place of prayer. Eat and drink, but waste not by excess. For Allah loveth not the wasters. And the subject matter of this wasting is called tabdeer in Islam. And there's a whole, I'll be doing a whole lecture inshallah next week on it. As I'm wrapping it up now, I want you to not decide I'm not going to come back. I don't want to hear any more about this. I'm already miserable enough. 
I beg you to come back because I promise you that this will benefit you in this life and in the hereafter. The religion of Islam is the religion of life and its precepts and rules set the ground rules for human felicity and success, both for the individual as well as the society. So I beg you and I plead that next week you will come back if Allah gives us health and strength. And we're going to go even deeper into the inner dimensions of verse 188 of Surah Al-Baqarah. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Anything that I have said that is wrong, it came from my own nafs. I beg you to forgive me and pray for me. Anything that I've said correct or right came from Allah and His Messenger. And so I hope that it will be a benefit to you. I'm going to ask you to get ready. We're going to have Jeopardy today, alhamdulillah. So, uh, inshallah, same time next week. Bring a friend. I love you for the sake of Allah.